Tuna is the most traveled fish in the world. Every year, over 6 million tons are shipped across continents, destined for sushi bars, supermarkets, and dinner tables. From the moment a tuna is hauled from the ocean, the clock starts ticking. Unlike other seafood, it degrades rapidly, losing its signature texture and vibrant color within hours if not handled with precision. So how does this highly prized fish survive a journey of thousands of miles while maintaining peak freshness? The answer lies in a high-stakes dance of rapid freezing, specialized transport, and a race against time that stretches from industrial fishing fleets in the Pacific to the high-tech fish markets of Japan. The journey of a tuna begins in the vast, unpredictable waters of the open ocean, where some of the world's most advanced fishing operations deploy fleets worth hundreds of millions of dollars to catch one of the most valuable seafood commodities on the planet. Tuna are not ordinary fish. They are apex predators, built for speed and endurance, capable of swimming at nearly 50 miles per hour and covering thousands of miles in their lifetime. Their strength, resilience, and migratory nature make them both a prize and a challenge to catch. Unlike sedentary fish that stay near coastal reefs, tuna roam the deep blue expanses of the Pacific, Atlantic, and Indian Oceans, meaning that industrial fishing fleets must navigate some of the most remote and treacherous waters on Earth to harvest them. There are three dominant methods used to catch tuna, each with its own advantages, limitations, and environmental impact. The most common and industrialized technique is purse seining, which accounts for nearly 65% of the world's tuna catch. Picture a massive circular net, sometimes over a mile long, deployed around a school of tuna and then drawn shut from the bottom like a giant drawstring bag. This method is incredibly efficient, capturing thousands of fish at a time, but it also comes with significant risks. The biggest issue is bycatch. Unintended marine species, such as dolphins, sharks, and sea turtles, that get caught in the nets. In an effort to mitigate this, some fisheries use fish aggregating devices, fads, floating structures that attract tuna while reducing unintended captures, though their environmental impact is still a subject of heated debate. For high-value tuna species such as bluefin and yellowfin, many fisheries use longline fishing, a method that involves setting out miles of baited hooks suspended from a single line drifting in the ocean. Unlike purse seining, which captures entire schools at once, longlining is far more selective, allowing fishers to target larger, higher-quality tuna that command premium prices in markets like Japan, Europe, and the United States. However, longline fishing is controversial because it often results in the accidental capture of endangered species, including seabirds and sharks, which become entangled in the hooks. In response, some fisheries have introduced innovative techniques such as circle hooks and weighted lines, which reduce the likelihood of catching non-target species while maintaining high tuna yields. At the other end of the spectrum is pole and line fishing, the most traditional and sustainable method. Imagine fishers standing at the edge of a boat, using long poles with barbless hooks to catch individual tuna, one at a time. This method is the gold standard for sustainability because it nearly eliminates bycatch and ensures that only mature tuna are harvested. However, it is significantly less efficient on a commercial scale. While purse seine and long line vessels can haul in thousands of fish in a single trip, pole and line fishing is labor intensive and relies on healthy, abundant fish populations to be viable. Despite its lower yields, it remains an important method in countries like Japan, Indonesia, and the Maldives, where small scale fishers rely on traditional techniques for their livelihood. Regardless of how a tuna is caught, once it is hauled onto the deck, a new challenge begins preserving its quality before decay sets in. Unlike white-fleshed fish like cod or haddock, which can be stored on ice for days without significant degradation, tuna flesh is extremely perishable. The reason lies in its biochemistry. Tuna are warm-blooded, a rarity among fish, and their bodies generate heat when they struggle. If this heat is not rapidly dissipated, it causes enzymatic breakdown and bacterial growth, leading to burnt tuna syndrome, where the flesh turns brown develops an off-putting texture, and loses its market value. To prevent this, commercial tuna fleets use sophisticated preservation techniques, the most important of which is superfreezing. On large industrial vessels, tuna are often flash-frozen at sea at temperatures as low as minus 60 degrees Celsius minus 76 degrees Fahrenheit, a process that locks in freshness at a cellular level. 
This ultra-cold freezing method is vital because it prevents the formation of ice crystals that would otherwise damage the muscle structure, preserving the tuna's firm texture and vibrant red color. In contrast, lower-grade tuna intended for canning is typically frozen at around minus 18 degrees Celsius 0 degrees Fahrenheit, sufficient for long-term storage, but not enough to maintain the premium quality demanded by sushi markets. For fresh tuna, the handling process is even more delicate. Instead of being frozen, the fish are immediately bled, gutted, and packed in ice to keep their core temperature just above freezing. This is a meticulous and highly skilled operation. Improper bleeding can lead to residual blood oxidizing in the flesh, turning it an unappetizing dark brown, while mishandling during transport can cause bruising that affects both appearance and taste. In the case of ultra-premium bluefin tuna, some specimens are even given a killing stroke known as ikejime, a Japanese technique that involves swiftly inserting a spike into the fish's brain to minimize stress and rigor mortis, preserving its pristine quality. Once processed, the tuna must be swiftly transported to its next destination, whether that's a cold storage facility, a cannery, or a high-end seafood auction. This stage of the supply chain introduces another set of logistical hurdles. The sheer scale of tuna harvesting means that dozens of vessels unload their catches simultaneously, requiring highly coordinated operations at major fishing ports. In key hubs like Shimizu, Japan, General Santos, Philippines, and Manta, Ecuador, tuna are offloaded in an intricate ballet of cranes, refrigerated trucks, and conveyor systems designed to maintain the strict cold chain. Even the slightest deviation from optimal temperatures can result in devastating losses, Imagine an entire cargo of flash-frozen tuna warming up just a few degrees during transport, leading to irreversible degradation. The journey from ocean to market is a battle against time, where technology and tradition merge to maintain quality. But catching and freezing the fish is only part of the challenge. The next critical step, transporting it across continents while preserving its peak condition, demands an even greater level of precision. From the moment a tuna is caught, the race to keep it fresh begins. Unlike other seafood, which can tolerate moderate fluctuations in temperature, tuna is extremely sensitive to spoilage. Its rich, oxygen-binding muscle structure makes it prone to oxidation, causing the flesh to turn from a prized deep red to an unappetizing brown if not handled with precision. The key to preserving quality lies in a meticulously controlled cold chain, where every step, from freezing at sea to air freight logistics, is optimized to prevent degradation. For tuna destined for canning, freezing at minus 18 degrees Celsius 0 degrees Fahrenheit is standard, sufficient for long-term storage. However, for premium sashimi-grade tuna, the preservation process is far more demanding. The industry relies on superfreezing, rapidly bringing the fish down to minus 60 degrees Celsius minus 76 degrees Fahrenheit or lower to lock in freshness at the cellular level. At this temperature, enzymatic activity is halted, and the flesh remains as pristine as if it had just been caught. Specialized blast freezers aboard industrial vessels ensure this process begins immediately, preventing deterioration before the tuna even reaches shore. Fresh tuna, on the other hand, requires constant refrigeration at 0 degrees Celsius to 2 degrees Celsius, 32 degrees Fahrenheit to 35 degrees Fahrenheit, a far more delicate process. Instead of freezing, the fish is bled, gutted, and packed in slurry ice, a mix of crushed ice and seawater that evenly distributes cold without damaging the flesh. Even slight deviations from the ideal temperature range can cause spoilage, making precision crucial. Once preserved, transportation becomes the next challenge. Frozen tuna is shipped in refrigerated cargo vessels, designed to maintain ultra-low temperatures for weeks at sea. These ships use advanced cooling systems, such as liquid nitrogen or CO2 refrigeration, ensuring that massive hauls of tuna reach international markets in perfect condition. For fresh tuna, however, time is the real enemy. To maintain peak quality, it must reach consumers within 48 hours of being caught, making air transport the only viable option. Every day, cargo planes filled with freshly packed tuna depart from major fishing hubs like General Santos, Philippines, Male, Maldives, and Pago Pago, American Samoa, bound for seafood markets in Japan, the US, and Europe. Specialized cold storage facilities at airports help maintain the cold chain, ensuring the fish remains at optimal conditions during transit. Upon arrival, 
fresh tuna moves rapidly to markets like Tokyo's Toyosu Fish Market, where buyers meticulously inspect the fish for color, texture, and fat content. Auctions take place at dawn, with the highest quality fish commanding thousands, sometimes even millions, of dollars. From there, it's rushed to high-end sushi restaurants and seafood distributors, ensuring that consumers enjoy it at peak freshness, despite its journey across oceans. With rising demand for tuna, technology is playing an increasingly critical role in maintaining quality. IoT-enabled sensors now track temperature in real-time, reducing spoilage risks, while blockchain systems provide full traceability, ensuring buyers know exactly where and how a tuna was caught. Researchers are also exploring alternative freezing methods, such as high-pressure processing HPP, to extend shelf life while maintaining freshness. The tuna industry operates under immense logistical pressure, where modern cold chain logistics dictate success. Whether deep frozen for months or flown fresh in hours, one rule remains unchanged. Every tuna's journey is a relentless race against time. Transporting tuna across the globe presents a complex logistical challenge, requiring a delicate balance between cost, speed, and preservation. The choice between air freight and cargo shipping depends on multiple factors, including the type of tuna, its market value, and the urgency of delivery. While frozen tuna is suited for bulk shipping over long distances, fresh tuna must reach its destination within 48 hours, making air transport the only viable option. Each method comes with its own set of challenges, from temperature fluctuations to cost and efficiencies, making tuna transport one of the most meticulously managed supply chains in the world. For frozen tuna, ocean freight is the preferred method. Cargo ships transport thousands of tons of frozen fish in temperature-controlled containers, ensuring that the tuna remains at minus 60 degrees Celsius, minus 76 degrees Fahrenheit, or lower throughout the journey. These specialized refrigerated vessels, known as reefer ships, are equipped with liquid nitrogen or CO2 cooling systems, allowing them to carry bulk shipments across thousands of miles while maintaining cryogenic temperatures. This makes shipping frozen tuna far more cost-effective than air transport, allowing massive quantities to reach processing hubs in Ecuador, Thailand, Spain, and Japan, where they are further prepared for supermarkets, restaurants, and canneries. However, the trade-off is time. Ocean freight can take several weeks, making it unsuitable for fresh tuna that requires near-immediate consumption. For premium tuna, time is the ultimate constraint. Bluefin and yellowfin, highly sought after for sashimi, must reach their destination within 48 hours, a feat only possible through air freight. Every day, jumbo jets packed with freshly caught tuna take off from key fishing hubs like General Santos, Suva, and Mail, bound for elite seafood markets across Tokyo, New York, and Paris. The logistics are highly choreographed. Tuna must be caught, processed, packed, and transported to airports within hours, ensuring that it remains within the ideal 0 degrees Celsius to 2 degrees Celsius, 32 degrees Fahrenheit to 35 degrees Fahrenheit, range throughout transit. Any deviation above this can accelerate spoilage, while temperatures that drop too low risk freezing the fish's delicate muscle fibers, altering its texture. Unlike frozen tuna, which is stacked and stored for weeks, fresh tuna is handled with extreme care. Each fish is carefully wrapped in moisture-resistant materials to prevent dehydration and packed in insulated crates filled with slurry ice, which helps maintain a uniform temperature. Dedicated cold storage facilities at major airports, such as Narita in Japan and JFK in New York, play a crucial role in preserving the cold chain, ensuring that fresh tuna remains pristine before reaching its final destination. Once it arrives, it is immediately transported to seafood auctions, premium grocery stores, or directly to high-end sushi restaurants, where it is served within hours of landing. However, air transport comes at a steep price. Shipping fresh tuna by air can cost up to 20 times more per kilogram than sea freight. Given this high cost, only the most valuable tuna, often bluefin fetching tens of thousands of dollars per fish, justifies the expense. The environmental impact is also significant, as air freight generates a much larger carbon footprint compared to ocean shipping. As global demand for sustainable seafood grows, some companies are exploring alternative solutions, such as improved preservation methods that could extend the shelf life of fresh tuna, reducing reliance on costly and environmentally taxing air transport. Despite the differences between air and sea transport, both rely on an unbroken cold chain. 
Whether deep-frozen tuna is shipped across the ocean in cryogenic containers or freshly caught bluefin is flown overnight, the key to success is precise temperature control at every stage. A single lapse, whether a power failure in a reefer ship or a delay at an airport, can mean devastating financial losses as an entire shipment of premium tuna can be rendered unsellable due to spoilage. The industry's reliance on IoT-enabled temperature sensors and real-time monitoring systems ensures that logistics teams can detect and address any issues before they compromise the fish's quality. Ultimately, the decision between air and sea transport is dictated by the type of tuna and its destination. While frozen tuna can afford the slow and steady journey across oceans, fresh tuna is locked in a high-stakes race against time, where every hour counts. This delicate balance between efficiency, cost, and sustainability makes tuna transport one of the most sophisticated supply chains in the world, a testament to the extraordinary effort required to bring this prized fish from the ocean to the consumer's plate. The journey of tuna from ocean to plate is a race against time, guided by precision, technology, and global logistics. Whether frozen at minus 60 degrees Celsius for bulk shipping or flown fresh within 48 hours, every step ensures peak quality. Next time you savor a bite of sashimi, consider the journey it has taken, across oceans, through freezing temperatures, and on high-speed flights, all to reach your plate in perfect condition. Behind every tuna is a hidden world of precision, science, and global trade, proving that what seems simple is, in reality, an extraordinary feat of modern logistics.